first podcast interview. <laughs> Gross. Yeah, I've been on like the radio, the news a couple times, but first first podcast. All right. Well, it's nothing complicated. Um, introduce yourself, Pablo Garcia. Man, I'm fucking. I throw shows. I run sound. I'm like I do a lot. I do pretty much everything for my company right now. <laughs> and then your company, Six Six One All Inclusive Entertainment. And, um. I, I the what I've noticed is it's mostly like um, I don't know what genre, but I'll put it like into like punk rock, punk rock, hardcore. I mean, I've been doing that lately a lot more, but last year or last year I was a lot into the hip hop. It's just some of the local artists, man. They don't they don't like to show up. They don't like to promote, and it can be it can be hard to get them to do what they need to do. While bands will push stuff, they push it, but also it's just you know like. I feel though that these hip hop artists don't feel like they get taken care of either by a lot of promoters and stuff like that, where the difference is I take care of all of my people. Like everybody pay, gets paid if we do a good night, everybody gets to eat no matter what. Oh, so some people will walk away feeling like, Oh, like I, I, I brought the people, but he got all the money. Yeah. Sometimes it can be like that, but also some people don't know like the expenses that go in the background, you know, and stuff like that. That for sure. Um, how is the, how did you get into the, like the punk rock scene? Um, the, the scene on it, I actually, the first thing I did, I used to throw a bunch of parties when I was younger. I was like, you know, house parties, all kinds of stuff. And I always do extra stuff. Um, I actually didn't get into the punk scene until, um, probably about five years ago when I first started doing this stuff. Cause I threw a birthday party in my backyard and over 300 people showed up. It was insane. It was, I had set everything up myself, built a stage and then. We, we had vendors, we had everything. I worked on like for like two months getting it together. Um, and it was just a birthday party. I was charging $3 a head. Damn. And it became, like we literally were like, oh my God, like I wasn't expecting that. But it was all day, like I had bands from every genre, like hip hop, indie, um, reggae and punk, hardcore. And I did it and it was a, such a huge thing. Like um, we had a bunch of booze and stuff. Um, every single drop gone. I walked away very, very happy that day. And I was not expecting that. And literally one of my buddies is like, dude, why don't you just do this? Like throw shows, like, you know, get into it. And I was like, all right, man, that actually, I'm going to run with it. And from there, I just took it from there. House backyard shows at first, they like, uh, the punks let me do the sound for them because they had really bad PAs. Mm -hmm. Like sound, I, I get it, it's punk music, but I'm, I do sound work, so I'm like, I don't like the way this sounds. So I like brought in some nice QSCs for them, fucking hooked up the mics, did everything, and they just, I just got in, started doing that, started bringing lights, started building my, you know, inventory, and just bringing it to the shows and doing it for free for them. Like I didn't charge them anything. Like, I was just coming out there to have a good time and to learn how to do sound work. Too, because I had a buddy that was showing me, but he's like, the best you're gonna get is doing it, you know, yeah. live, because it's it's a way different. So and that's I dived in like that, and then eventually the bar scenes and all the venues seen my backyard events and my events and they reached out to me first i started off at casa blanca we opened the back door and i was throwing hip-hop and punk all in the back door of casa blanca at the gay club so they loved us there too so the drag queens would come through and watch everything and we'd, we'd sometimes have the drag queens on to do like a little show that's how i got cool with the drag queens too man sounds pretty inclusive yeah, but, man, we uh, we work with everybody. Like you would think, like um, I think it's when you when I perceive like the punk rock scene or the metal scene, it seems so angry, but it's not really, I guess, anger towards anybody. It's more just um, um, the type of music. Yeah, it's aggressive. Yeah, because I'm like, dude, I'm like, you can put a drag show in the middle of a punk show, and they'll fucking go crazy over it. They love it, and I've done it before, and they 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 just. They eat it up. They love all that stuff too, especially if you get the right drag queens. You know, they are a little more shock drag queen, and they do the whole goth and punk set look and everything. I like had a girl that came out. She had a fucking dildo, and she was like squirting cream out of it and stuff. It was crazy. It was crazy. It's badass. Her name's Simona. She's a badass drag queen. That's pretty. That's pretty out there. That's crazy. Yeah, man. Our drag shows get wild. Is there a, a right now when you're talking about the different. Um, the, the scene itself and all the different types of people mm -hmm. very inclusive so is there like in like in rap mm -hmm. there's people who 
they don't really live that life of like um, what being, they rap about. Yeah, what they rap about is that is that like a thing in metal too, where people are like trying to be like aggressive and like I don't care about things, but you know, not as much. I'm like some of it, some some of it goes a little bit, you know, with that. But I'm like most of them, you can't fake it because I'm like you'll get called out. They they won't. They'll be like, oh, this you're about this, okay. You know, be about it. You know, like they don't. You if you go in there and lie, and and you get caught, people will not let you live it down. They don't. They're none of that fake ass stuff. That, <laughs> nah. So what's the point of the mosh pit? Uh, that's that's that seems like not, when you when I see the videos, I'm like, that's crazy. What's okay. the point of that? No mosh pit or, or, or like when two step. That's hardcore swinging. two stepping. That's okay, different. Okay. That's right. not moshing. That would that's the that's a considered a completely different thing. I feel like, like okay. the hardcore stuff. I'm cool, but I'm not going to go in there because I don't want to get hit. People go in there knowing they're going to get hit and are going to get physical. That's literally the point of that. And it's, it's anger release. You know what I mean? And it's a safe place to do it because people know and let like if they take a kick to the face, they're like, oh, damn. All right. That was good. Like they'll they'll be like, damn, that was that was a solid ass kick, you know, and I see people get dropped. They get right back up, smile on their face, bleeding, and are 100% okay with it. Moshing is usually what they do more like metal and punk shows, and it's less physical, but it's more shoving, pushing, running into each other. You yeah. know, it's not as it's not as aggressive. And that's why it's called hardcore for a reason. You know what I mean? Last night, that was a hardcore show. People were getting dropped. It was crazy. Like the, during one of the sets, Moria started playing a breakdown whole crowd just starts throwing their arms everywhere and i was like oh it's waiting for someone to drop surprisingly no one got knocked out i was yeah. i was happy we you know we had a little bit of an issue with some guy but that was like some outside problem beef stuff and i was like take that shit out of here don't don't be coming here with that <laughs> so how, how are the the vendors with with when they see that they just try to look the other way they're like i don't want to see this what do you mean like the because like everybody's like swinging hard and stuff like we usually keep the vendors separate we, we don't we don't we don't like uh let them get that close. The pits will stay over there and they're usually, they usually will be like, oh, okay, there's a camera guy. Well, let's watch out. Oh, there's a, you know, vendor right here. Let's try not to destroy his stuff. You know what I mean? They're pretty good about it. Yeah. I would, um, like even like the owners, like I'd be like, well, holy shit. Like, am I liable for this? <laughs> um, that's, that, that's the thing too. Um, cause it's my show and it's my event. Technically I would be liable, not Jerry's in that sense. Uh -huh. Um, but I, I'm like, generally we'll put up a sign that says, you know, we're not liable for any injuries, this, this, and that. And they, Jerry's has all kinds of signs and stuff up like that, that are like, you know, you get hurt, this is your fault, basically. Have you, since, it, since that's kind of, I guess, normal, the, the, the extreme, you know, pits and the, what'd you call it? It was, had a, a name it's to a it. Two-stepping, hardcore two -stepping. dancing. Two -stepping. So the two-stepping and then the, the people launching stuff out into the, into the crowd. Have you ever seen something? You're like, well, I think that's what, that's a bit much. Um, yes, they've thrown chairs, and when that starts happening, I get in there and I'm like, hey, I. The thing too is, I feel like people will respect me a lot because I'll go on stage and I'll let them know and be like, if you guys don't calm the fuck down, I'm gonna mute you guys. I'm gonna mute everything and we're gonna stop. So they're just like too pumped up. Yeah, they'll get too pumped up. They're not like trying look. to hurt their fans and stuff. No, just, no they no, got no. too pumped up. Yeah, they're just they're just getting crazy. That's it, you know. I've heard of, um, I've heard of like uh, bands that like. I don't know how true it is. It seems too extreme because then, like, what do you do after that? But I've heard, like, the that one guy who used to, like, throw shit into the crowd and yes. blood. Yeah, yeah. He was kind of a piece of shit. G.G. Allen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, people will tell you he's a piece of shit. He was a piece of shit. People, it's shock rock. That's what that is. It's, like, theatrical crazy. But he was about it. Like, my dude was wild. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I heard about this Japanese band. The dude, like, sawed his arm off or something. Like, just... Um, like with a chainsaw or something just like just took his arm off and then threw it into the crowd and i was like man this is like i don't like what that, do you do after a, that that's a shock even to me bro I'm like, like what, what do you what do you do after that like you, now you don't you, have an arm you die <laughs> my the craziest one i heard which wasn't in a crowd or anything but it was a uh, i forget the name of the band fuck Cannibal Corpse, maybe? yeah, Cannibal Corpse. Mm -hmm. Where they they um they took the pieces of the of the member who like committed suicide, they took pieces of his of his skull, made like necklaces and shit out of it. I can see that. That's that's um, that's more like you know I can see them doing that. Yeah. 
at that point, you know, that's kind of more like they want to remember him and, you know, probably hardcore fans because Cannibal Corpse is, big, is a big, big band. They were in movies like back in the day. Like you, they were in the back. I'm trying to think of what movie I just watched where one of the guys, they're walking through, his big actor, he's walking through and Cannibal Corpse is playing a concert in the background. <laughs> Do you, um, so have you always been into the punk rock scene? Or I've is always, that something I've always came loved later? punk music and stuff, but I'm like, I started my my thing was hip hop and you know I grew up with in a Mexican household you know my mom's playing Selena every morning and I'm like my dad and everybody listen to hip hop I have an older black brother so he he was too really really into hip hop he got me into that so the punk and the metal actually came a little bit later for me probably around like, I was like 15 16 is when I got more into like punk and metal and stuff How does how does um you mentioned earlier about some of the groups not like individuals not taking the music serious or the the bands not taking it serious It'd to be show a band. up or to show up to sh yeah, yeah. show up normally i don't have an issue with the bands mm -hmm. most of the time bands if they're going to drop a show they'll let me know before i used to have a little bit of an issue with it depending on it but i'm like most of the times bands want to be there because they don't want that negative outlook like oh these bands don't show up you know what i mean they're they're dead to back out on you all the time and so it's like they generally are pretty good for it, you know. What are some of like the the most difficult things with with dealing with that scene? Mm. <sighs> Just their sometimes it can be like their their internal drama. They bring it to the show, and I'm like, um, that's that's probably be the biggest thing when they bring their outside shit to the show when we're trying to have a good time, and they start getting into it. That's probably the only real difficult thing when it comes to like the metal hardcore hip hop or not hip hop but metal and hardcore and punk scene and stuff like that do you put on the the B bdsm uh, yeah, yeah, event yeah. too yeah how did how did that get started that's a trip i remember i i walked by there and then i think i just was gonna get i was just gonna get a pizza and then, I'm, and then they're like are oh, you coming into the show i was like no nah, i'm just getting a pizza so i went to get a pizza and then i saw the curtain and i was like looking over and i was like what the fuck is going on here and then uh uh, Car Karina and, and her husband were trying to get me to go in there and I was I took a peek and I was like I'm good I'm out. <laughs> yeah I didn't know um it started because uh there was another event um here in town I can't remember what it was called um uh, spacing out on the name I was like it was a really huge but it was like a BDSM event as well it's like crazy punk BDSM and uh I actually never got to go to it and so um, I seen videos of it. I talked to a couple of my buddies and I was like, you know what? I really want to do this. I was like, I'm going to figure something out and I'm going to get it done. And I just, I like, I like the stuff, you know, I built all of my BDSM equipment myself and stuff like all that stuff. Oh, that's all your shit. I thought it was just like a group you hired. No, that's all my equipment. Oh, what? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I hire, I hire some um, uh, like dominatrixes and stuff like that. And then this last, so where, do you, where, where do you store all this stuff? Oh, it's in my garage. I have a bunch of BDSM equipment in my garage. Just the cross, the base, bank benches, handcuffs, all that shit. It's all just packed. I can see your, I can see your mom playing Selena, trying to dust off all the BDSM <laughs> shit. <laughs> she was right, like, right. like, does she know what all that stuff is? Oh, yeah, she, my mom's cool. She goes, that's just, that's just my son. Yeah, that's, she's, that's, she's my mom's really, really chill lady. You know, we grew up, we grew up on the east side, and like right next to uh, KMC literally a, two blocks over where they ain't got no sidewalks yeah <laughs> that's where that's where we grew up so. where it floods when it rains yeah that's crazy so you've always been here from bakersfield yeah born and raised here the do you do any shows outside of bakersfield I just started doing shows outside of Bakersfield. I did my first one in a Tescadero. We did, I did, went and did Sound in Oceanside. Um, and I'm, cause I'm working with a, a guy a, uh, named Chris from a group called Midstate Metal Fest. And they like, he was like, man, you need to come do a show with me out of town, you know? And so we did, and it, it was great, dude. It was 100% success. Took all my sound equipment, my lights. It was a coffee shop, packed the coffee shop out. It was great. It was punk, 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 like death metal show in a coffee shop. Um, I think it was a, a, a dark nectar coffee. They're really, really cool. They got um, like just really good atmosphere in there, and like it was a great space. They were really good hosts, and it was cool, man. Like it was dope. Dude, when you do the local ones, is usually got Jerry's. 
Uh, it, it depends. Jerry's. I was starting to work with Narducci's now a bit. It's What's just, Narducci's? It's a, a Narducci's Cafe. It used to be like, it used to be a thing back in the day, I guess. And then it closed down for a really long time and they just reopened it. It's mm. on, it's like old downtown. It's on uh, the, like uh, the other side of uh, Union. Like when you're going down, um, uh, mm. I think it's 19th. You go down, or 18th. So you're going to go up 18th and then like right right before you make that left to go over the train tracks it's like right there hmm. yeah all right i do that i worked with the tower i've worked with la movida when i brought um a ghost face killer here um i don't work with casablanca anymore um, how's how's that with um reaching out to people like they're more known when you reach out to those artists like hey can you come here and ghost face man i want you to do the show or yeah um what's I, the process of that I have a agency. I have a, like two agencies I have that I go through. They, they always send me lists of artists that I can book, but that also comes with like the agency fee and stuff like that. So you're going to get taxed on that. But I also, I'll, I'll just email and reach out. I find, I go on the internet, I do my research, find their agents and I'll just personally email them and let them know. And sometimes I'll get a message back and sometimes I won't, you know, I'm like, I, I try to use my references too. like, I've worked with ubiquitous strange music technically um so like stuff like that i use that as reference and i'm like you can ask them they loved working with me and they'll give me a good reference you know yeah i think people are surprised i know when i talk to people about doing a podcast like what's the point i was like i don't know just something to do man just meet up with people talk to people um sit down talk to someone for a little bit but um i think people would be surprised that like people are willing to do it mm -hmm. even if they don't like people are like oh well, i'm not nobody nobody knows me i ain't got no leverage or anything it's like people don't care People just want to go on podcasts and just talk to people. Even like here, uh, I don't. There's so many people that I've never even met. I just know them through like IG or something, mm -hmm. or I've maybe seen them at an event. But they I wouldn't say someone that I sat down and talked to for a while or had a beer with or anything. Mm -hmm. and they show up at my house. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> just like I, there was a couple. There's girls that had a podcast, but I, I fucked up on the recording. Or not, not, that one I didn't fuck up on the recording. I deleted it on accident because I forgot to change the name on it. And so I thought I had finished that file and I deleted it, but I had deleted the the other interview with them. Um, yeah, they just showed up at my house. Never met me before, never knew me. I just like, hey, man, would you do a podcast? Yeah, where's that? It's at my apartment. I gave them the address. They showed up. And um, I was like, whatever, you know. But I was just like, man, if there's some weirdos out there, man, that'd be some crazy shit. Yeah. Um, uh, Andre Gonzalez, the, the council member for Bakersfield, I hit him up. He said he would do it. But then I ended up canceling all the shows for a week because my girl got sick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and then um, I, I hit him up the day before yesterday to see, see if he was willing to do it. So I'm waiting for him. Uh, I got Chuck coming. Um, Chuck, a, a, a Chuck, rapper? Chuck a rapper. One? Yeah. Or no, yeah, no. Uh, one guy that, Chuck. Yeah, that one guy yeah, Chuck. Yeah. Yeah. I always tell people I, was, I get their names wrong because of the IG. Mm -hmm. But I think he just goes by Chuck. But for his his social media is always a, uh, that one guy Chuck. Yeah. Um, so he said he would do the show a couple other people. Um, Afro Man said he would do the show when he was in town. Well, not him, but his rep or whatever the mm -hmm. fuck. I said, sent the email, and then they were like, "Yeah, man." They gave me he gave me his phone number. He's like, "Yeah, just um, hit me up the day before, and then we'll talk." I was like, "All right." Sent him a message, nothing. So I was like, "Fuck!" I was like, "Man, that would have been dope." Yeah, that, that that happens too. That what they probably did is they probably like went and looked on your thing and were like just tried decided whether or not they wanted to come. Yeah, you know? and that, I think those are the situations where like yeah, they want you to have like a shitload of followers. Yeah, and, they want they they want to outreach. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think right now it's just mostly like fake bots following me. <laughs> probably like a hundred hundred fake bots that follow my shit. Nah, because um, <laughs> I I know I'll post something and I'll, it's always like some hot ass chick with like a oh, bunch yeah. of numbers, and I'm always like, who the fuck are these people? Ever since Twitter started blocking all the bots, like I started noticing that on my IG, I they start like, they start flooding over to IG. Yeah, yeah, I was like, what the fuck? That's crazy. Um, how are how do you select the people to do your 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 shows? Hon bands? Honestly, if you're willing to play, I'll give you a chance. Period. I let people. I there's only a few bands in town that I won't work with, and I'm like, they know who they are. Um. Uh, but. Most of the times, dude, I will work. I will give everybody a shot. I have no like hip hop artists too. When it comes to like rappers and stuff like that, I'm like, you guys want to do? You got to open up. But that's also why they tend to not show up because they don't want an opening spot. And I'm like, you've never even performed before. 
I've never seen you do anything. You want to be in the middle of the show? Like, get out of so here with that. Their ego is bigger yep. than than yeah. what they can produce. Mm -hmm. What are what are some of the lessons you've learned from from it? Because I I know I've seen your your company probably on most flyers for parties out here. Um, either you're either a part of the promotion or, or I touch the sound or I'm doing something's something. going on. Yeah, I try I, to I see, I see your label there, like pretty much on anything, yeah. especially anything having to do with like the metal and the punk. Um, what are some of the lessons you've learned from it? Trust my gut. Don't listen to other sub people. Sometimes like when it comes to like, Oh, this show's going to be bad. This and this and that, like we could get this many people. I can sell this many tickets and this. And I'm like, uh, if I feel any kind of way, like so I've done, I've taken the risk a couple of times on some people and it just, it doesn't play out well, especially because people like they, they do that. They hype themselves up. And then when it comes down to like, you know, everything that's like, Oh, what happened? And they're just like, Oh, I don't know. I thought we would be able to sell all this and this. And I'm like, yeah, yep. I'll talk. I'll talk. A lot of people have ideas that's what I've learned too. Like a lot of people have all these ideas and you gotta be real selective on what you're, what you're picking. Cause people will come at you. They cut. Some people come at me with like, I got this idea for a show. You want to try to do this and this. And I'm just like, Nope, I'm sorry. I'm like, if you, cause a lot of times too, it's them coming at me and being like, we want you to provide everything. Like they're just, it's their idea and that's it. And then they yeah. want to take a part of it. And I'm like, well, do you have, are you going to put up money? Are you going to work? Are you going to run sound? Are you going to bring security guards? Are you going to be a stage hand? What are you going to do? You're just, it's just an idea. You know, that's a lot of people come at me like that. And I got to be real selective about what I pick and choose. Short notice shit is bad. Take your time. Don't rush and make sure you got time to promote your show. Cause I had a bad habit last year of just being like, yeah, I'll pick this show up two weeks before it happens or a month. And like a month is decent, but like two weeks or a week just to help out people. And I'm like, it just ends up burning a hole in my pocket, you know? And I, I do do it sometimes. I'm like certain bands. I'm like, all right, I'll put you up. It's cool. I don't mind giving you guys a place to play music. And I do some stuff for the scene, just for the scene, you know? So I'm willing to take that a little L because usually it'll be like 50, 100 bucks I might lose on the show. But um, I'm like, for me, it's cool because it, it gives people like, oh, you know, this guy is a good promoter. He'll pay us no matter what. Like, like he's going to help us and he'll help other bands, especially smaller bands that are coming through that don't have like huge followings, but they're like up and coming punk and metal bands. And I'm, I'm always willing to like, well, we can try something or I can probably get you a venue where they'll pay you like a little bit of money to play. You know what I mean? Do you, do you do any of the, are you like in a band? Were you ever in a band yourself? Yeah, I was in, I was in a band called, um, uh, what was it called? I can't remember. We were a band for like a month. I played that 300 person show though. That was our only show we played and it was insane. I was like, I didn't want to do it, but they all set up and they're like, Oh, I'll get on stage. And I was like, fuck, all right, fuck it. I went on there. And, um, yeah, I think it was, uh, among Titans? Yeah, I think it was Among Titans. That was their name. We were banned for like a month and a half, probably. They didn't like me focusing on throwing shows too much because I was like, you know, I got really into that afterwards. So, and I was the one putting together our practices and shit like that. So I started kind of not doing it as much. And they were like, well, you're focusing on that. And I'm like, realize when I'm doing this, like eventually I'm going to be the one getting us on shows. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, you want to get on a, black dolly a murder show i could probably make that happen you know i could we can go play with who we want and yeah. stuff like that you know but yeah then they we just broke up i was like it was cool it was cool with all of them it was just funny because my guitarist um uh they complained about that we break up and the guitarist goes and starts his own production company <laughs> he tried to go start throwing shows right afterwards and i was like he's completely unsuccessful it, it didn't work out really well for him um but yeah i was like what the fuck? I was like, you just got done telling me that that throwing shows was interfering with the music too much, and you're over here throwing shows and then starting another band. So what, what's the what's the punk rock life like? I, like for me, I grew up with people who were like into punk rock, and I always thought like, man, some of these little rocker chicks are kind of hot, kind of cute. But I was always like, oh man, do their feet stink? I was yes. Thought, <laughs> 
<laughs> Bruh. Oh my God. Let me tell you. I mean, some of them are really clean. But if a girl says I'm a crust punk, stay away. Oh, you wait. What's that? Crust punk is like, I don't care if I stink or I'm they're dirty. About yeah, they're about being, you know, like that. And so it's like, but you'd be surprised. Like some of the girls are like really, you know, they want to look nice and shit like that. But I'm like, you do have punks that are crusty punks, hairy armpits, stuff like that. And it's like, I don't fuck around with that. <laughs> I don't like that. Yeah, I think I think it took me a while until I got older, and I was like, oh, I like the fashion of the punk scene. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily like the lifestyle of the punk scene because mm-hmm. I was like, man, I always like looked at those boots and stuff, and I'm like, man, I wonder if it feeds things from like being like just standing all day and dancing and. Just going all hard. <laughs> all the coke. <laughs> yeah, I freaking, uh, what was that manic relapse with a bunch of people, a bunch of buddies? Uh, it's a punk festival. Uh, the homies goes to go take a shower and he um, opens the shower and throws his shoes out. And I just was looked over and I took a whiff, bro, and started vomiting in the sink. I grabbed his shoes and threw them back in the bathroom. I was like, hey, none of that. I was like, ah, you, you wait till that steam goes down. It smells like hot feet coming out of there. You made me vomit. <laughs> like ugh. sometimes bro i'm like jesus because i'm a real clean dude like i, I can't I, I can't be dirty and stuff like that as much as the shit i do and i get i get i have to go shower i'm like <laughs> i wonder i wonder if someone could market a, a like a odor um eliminator for like patchouli punk. they use patchouli there's, 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 they use patchouli patchouli is the punk go-to to get rid of that stank but it's patchouli. Is it like actual like foot odor thing? No, or? no, no. It's just like uh, patchouli. I think is what they use to kill the smell for like uh, dead bodies and shit. Oh shit! But it has like a very that's very dis- punk rock to use. It's very distinct. Shit. It's very distinct. But it's not. It's not a bad smell. It's not. I personally don't like it. But um, it's not like a really bad smell. It's cool. You can deal with it. Damn, they had to resort to lime. <laughs> right? <laughs> Just powder, lime powder all over their fucking boots. Yeah, but some of them, too, like, there are what, uh, how you were saying, like, uh, bands that can't fake it, there there are fashion punks and stuff like that. You were like, you know, they're just about the style and this, and they like this the way it looks, and that's what they're about, but they're not really, like, they can barely even handle the music. If you took them to a punk show, they would probably cry. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> I've, I've met punk people who, again, they're, like, the fashion they're kind of not really into punk music they like the idea of like making other people feel uncomfortable um and then i've seen the other people that made me uncomfortable bro i remember and i have video of it we never put it out we were gonna put it out the guy that produced it um was interviewing me going downtown like just talking to random people and uh he was gonna put it out and i told him like no i don't feel comfortable putting it out man like this kid didn't care but we're walking by the mint and we start, we're walking, and this guy's like, what are you guys doing? But I thought he was, like, trying to get crazy. Like, what are you guys doing in here? And I'm like, what? He's like, what are you guys doing? And I was like, oh, we're just interviewing people for for a YouTube channel. He's like, oh, yeah? Can I be on it? And we're like. <laughs> oh, damn, like, there he goes. I was like, yeah, yeah, you can. And that's another thing I tell people is, like, we went downtown, and I was like, hey, let's go practice first before we actually try to do something. Yeah. Just to get used to stopping people and getting getting them to talk. Man, once people see that fucking light turn on, you got a camera, you got a microphone. They come walking. They come walking. They want to be on that shit. So I'm like, all right. So this guy's there, and he's he got writing on his fucking forehead. He's bald, has the vest, the boots. All the chicks next to him look hella coked out, of just just sweat sweaty. Oh, and yeah. all, and then uh, um, he he just goes like, yeah, man, I'm just here doing some coke with my friends, and he has his bolsita and he does the cool just a big old line a big old key of it and then um we're like what the fuck do we do and i was like just keep recording <laughs> and so we just keep recording we keep yeah. talking to him and then he goes you did you get me doing it and he's i could do it again he does it again ah. and we're all like what the fuck and he starts he he has his friend with him and he's all oily looking and shit yep. you know? and they're like talking and then they're hugging like kind of a shoulder hug they're like going back and forth, and he's like, "That's my homie, blah blah man. I won't give a fuck about nothing." And then, and then he he turns to him and he starts making out with his friend. Yeah, punks do that shit. He starts making out with that dude, and then uh, they stop kissing, and then he goes, "I'm not gay." Yep, yep, they'll do it. He's like, "We're not gay though," but 
I thought that shit was the funniest <laughs> shit. I was just so, it was just so fucking awkward. And then, uh, like, the girls didn't want to be in the video. And then after that, they were like, he's like, come on, girls, do something. Do something for the camera. We're trying to help this guy's YouTube. And they started making out. And I was just like, all right, man. All right. <laughs> like, this is, this is, this is crazy. And then they, they started following me on, on IG. So then I followed them back. I think the next day, I think they just that that was their life, bro. It wasn't like a moment. Like it's, they're like some that of them every so yeah, day. people. Some of them live like that, man. It's wild. I'm like, you see them like just running around, running amok, man. Yeah, they were they were still doing coke off each other's asses. There was this one girl with the fishnet, and I could recognize that she was because of the fishnet. I was like, that's that one girl, and they were she was bent over on the chair, and then the other guy was doing coke off her ass. <laughs> I was like, these people live in this shit there. And then the, I remember the producer telling me, like, bro, we we should just pay them to hang out with them for a weekend and just we'll record the whole fucking thing. <laughs> I was like, bro, it's not really that I, I'm nervous about them. Rather, I don't want to get caught up in the fun. Like, we're not now I'm getting coked out. Now yeah, I'm you're getting party. fucked up and, and doing all that shit. It's like, now, I'm going to join in a little bit. You know, I'm going to join in. And, um, now I'm buying all kinds of leather and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a rocker now, man. Fuck, this is my life. I love it. <laughs> yeah, you have some people that are really, really into that lifestyle, too, dude. I'm like, you got, like, hardcore fucking punks, man, sometimes. And I'm like, I feel like, though, it's more, like, um, younger, uh, a bit younger. Because as, as they get older, you know, that shit takes a wear and tear on your body. And so, like, the older punks, you see them tend to, like, get jobs and, like, fall out of that a little, fall out of that extreme you know, hardcoreness of it. And they kind of step back and they realize like, I gotta be a fucking adult. You know, Reality. I can't just get fucking coked out every fucking night and I'm getting okay. smashed. I mean, yeah, you can, you can, you, you, I mean, if you're in a band and you're driving around playing shows and you live off that, you, psh, you can do it. <laughs> I'm like, psh, motherfuckers, they do do it. So what's the, what's the point of the straight, straight edge? I, I heard, I knew a guy, he was my stepdad's grandson. And he was staying with me while he worked for my stepdad. And so I remember he was telling me, like, yeah, man, we're straight edge or something. I was like, what the fuck is that? Because he had all these tattoos. And I was like, are you like a punk rocker or something? And he was like, he was like, nah, man. He was like, I'm more like straight edge. And I was like, what's that? He was like, you know, we go to parties and you know, we hang out, but we don't like we don't do drugs. And we get into fights, though. And then we, you know, he was telling me about, like, beating people with batons and having, like, all this, like, crazy, crazy party stuff. But that they didn't drink, and I was like, "What's the point of that shit?" And like, and then I've heard of other straight edge who I apparently they'll crash parties and kind of just ruin the party, like telling other people like, "Oh, you can't drink, or you can't be, you can't be drinking, you can't be smoking, you can't be doing any of the stuff." But it's like, it's the party. You, you're not really invited. You're just here, and you're like fucking up, fucking it up. Yeah, that I haven't really dealt with those because like the straight edge people that I know they're I feel like their objective is to be like, Hey, we we're straight edge. We don't need drugs, alcohol, but we can be here at the party having fun alongside yeah. you guys that are getting fucked up. You know, that sounds ridiculous. First off, you're sober and you're fighting people at a party. You're a jackass. <laughs> yeah. Cause they're fucking faded as fuck. Yeah. I mean, he would tell me about using like brass knuckles and, and he's a pussy because he's using weapons. He like was, he was a pussy. Like you can't, you, you, you you're going to tell me you're going to a party. I don't drink. I don't smoke, but I'm going to come in here with weapons and beat you. Sounds like the police. That's all that sounds like to me. Sounds like me some cop mentality shit. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's different to be there having a good time and then kind of a demonstration like, yeah, you don't really need to be on drugs to have a good time. I'm having a good time. Yeah. You know? But if you're going to be there, like beating people up because they're drinking, it's like, you're worse yeah. than them. Yeah. They're at least having a good time being good people. You're going in there just ruining and just beating people mercilessly. Like that's, that's, that's dumb. It's not, it's not okay. Like, <laughs> but yeah, that's what I get from my people that I know that are straight edge. They are, they're literally there to be like, look, we're straight edge, but we can party and have fun alongside you guys. But we just don't need to do that. You know what I mean? Some of them too, they're like, oh, I just don't smoke around me, but I'm also like, you're at the party walk away <laughs> you can walk two feet you know don't kill my buzz because you're straight edge too though you know i'll try to respect you know your boundaries but a lot, a lot of them are the ones that i know and stuff like that it's mostly just like they want to just show that they can have a good time without this you know any um any shout outs you would do to some of the bands out here and that maybe people should check out i mean man honestly it's it's hard because i'm like there's so many there's so many bands and so many artists i'm like uh god 
uh, punk wise, it'd be like God, Iron Sight, um, uh, Viscerate. Viscerate's more like metal. Um, uh, Bear King from last night is one of our local he- is a local band that plays here, um, and they headline my shows a lot of times. They're really freaking good. Um, Damn, uh, I feel bad. I don't want to <laughs> leave people out. I'm like, there's so many bands, dude. I'm like, we have a lot, a lot, a lot of good bands here in town. And that's why sometimes it can be a little like hard picking and choosing who I want to get on a bill. You know what I mean? Um, Because it can be, and God's actual name is it's Greed and Human Disgust. That's what the pronounce is. It's G-A-H-D. That's what's up. My yeah. cousin's tag name was uh, God. That's what he did. He it's spelled like graffiti. that too. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Human disgust. I was like, that's pretty clever. Pretty dope. 